I picked up these custodies super cheap on eBay and decided to speed paint them. In shipping they'd lost a few parts so I needed to make a couple of repairs with super glue. I knew I wanted these custodies to be gold because that's simple and a really easy way to start but I wanted the bases a different colour so I had to take them off. Listen to this. Nice. So I took all the models off their bases and pushed them to one side in a very tidy uh, heap and then grabbed some tiny world's bases I had lying around for the jet bikes. Gluing the flying stands on was a bit of a pain but uh, we got there in the end. I took them outside and sprayed them all black ready for the next stage. Okay here's how to do some very simple marble, you can probably do this with a rattle can too but I took some wet wipes that I dried out, so uh, dry, dry wipes <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I stretched that out over the base and using my airbrush sprayed some white ink through to give a slight marble effect, very easy. I wanted some variations so once I'd done all the bases with white I went over them again with green to give a really cool mottled stone effect, it's so easy, highly recommend. and. The bike bases look particularly good. Next up came an often overlooked friend on this channel, some gloss varnish that I brushed all over the bases to give them a nice marble shine. With the bases complete we're going on to the main course, the models. We're going to start with a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. Let's go! <laughs> Once the shade was dry it was straight in with all the metallics. There's a lot of silver on these guys, particularly on the bike, so this took quite some time, probably about two or three hours just to get the silver down, but that's one of our largest areas done. Now we get to do something slightly more interesting. And that's an easy highlight win by doing an all over dry brush with silver from Vallejo. Once our dry brush is complete we have to go in with blacks and I'm using this new contrast black legion paint which is incredible. It still took two coats over the metallics but it's amazing. With the blacks done we can really start to see the form these guys are taking on. There's a bit more detail, we can see what's happening and now we get to go on to some of the more interesting colours, specifically red. Yeah, a whole lot of red. One thing I did notice with this is that the red needed two coats over the gold. Gold is not an amazing primer colour, it takes a lot of time to paint anything over it, so even stuff like my trusty Black Legion contrast paint and corn red still needed two coats, so this was going to take a while no matter what I did. With the cloaks and tabards done I decided it was time to stick these guys to their bases. Not only does it help me feel like we're getting that much closer to completion but I don't need to get into those nasty little crevices now so I'm not going to get any paint on the bases. He says, just be careful if you're going to do this at this stage, you can of course leave them off the bases. And now tons of leather.
Thanks, Bram. Now we're going to feel like we're really making progress because we're going to do our first highlight. We're going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet to cover off all the capes, the cloaks, the voluminous robes, you know, the red bits. The way I'm painting this on is using Corn Red as my shade colour and the Evil Sun Scarlet as my mid-tone. So I'm basically covering up a good 80 to 90% of the cloaks and clothes. With that all done, I'm going to give a nice glaze of a Blood Angel's red contrast just to make sure it still reads as red and not orange. Now using one of my new favourites, Pale Sand from Vallejo, I'm going to add some scritchy scratches to all the leather parts. Going to search the bright highlight so quickly can be a poison chalice because it can make things look a bit odd, but in this case it's going to help things stand out on the table. Once our scritchy scratches are all done, I'm going to use some Agrax shade and give them an all over wash to make them look brown. Now I'm going to highlight all the blacks with a dry brush of Dawnstone. Our basic highlights all done, I'm going to tidy up some of the leather bits I forgot about and base coat our weapon grits with Stegodon Scale Green. You can skip this step if you want to fully speed paint these guys, but I wanted to add some colour to the biker's heads up displays and the little screens on their gloves. I also use this colour to base coat all of the gems across the army and goodness me, there are so many. Then with an off-white, I covered all of the power weapons ready for a contrast overcoat. Grabbing some warp lightning, I used it as contrast paints are intended and slapped it all over the power weapons. This is going to give a lovely complementary colour to all that red and gold. If red is our secondary colour, then green is definitely our tertiary and it's really important to have on the model. While the green's drying, let's do the faces on the two guys who aren't wearing helmets. Silly, bad tactical decision. And we're gonna use Gilliman Flesh and essentially just leave it at that because this stuff is magical. A speed painter's best friend for faces for sure. A lot of Fs in that sentence. On the jet bike's engines, I gave them a quick wash of Sarah from Sepia just to make them look a little bit different to the rest of the bike. Now a moment I was really looking forward to, gluing the bikes to their bases. Yeah. 
The army is now really coming together and looking decent. I'm going to keep the highlighting of the power weapon super simple using some warpstone glow and following the highlights that my contrast paint has already created for me and leaving the darkest greens dark. The final highlight for my power weapons is using some moot green and giving it a nice crisp edge highlight. Highlighting done for the weapons, I gave the weapon grips a quick cover over with Carbalite Green. I also painted up Trajan Valorish's wee weird uh, feather things, probably a memento of his dead bird or something. And I used Carbalite Green, Cyberite Green, and Gauss Blaster Green. Blaster Green. You never appreciate just how stupid these names are until you have to read them weekly. Oh, I almost forgot about uh, Trajan's pet lion he's got hanging off his shoulder. He's just carrying all his dead animals around with him. I gave it a quick cover off with Xandri Dust just to make sure it was base coated effectively. I also blocked in the eyes with the Black Legion. I shaded the lion with Skeleton Horde to try and give it a slightly off brown colour, so a more golden hue. But I didn't really like it in the end and ended up switching to thin down Dooble Brown in just a minute. I also made sure the feathers were properly highlighted. Here's the thin Doom Ball brown wash just to give that lion a real different effect to the rest of the leathery style substances all over. Once this was dry I gave it a quick dry brush with pale sand. And with the lion complete, Trajan is complete, and with Trajan complete, the army is complete. I painted this whole force up in probably around 12 hours, that's including fixing, base coating, doing the bases, all of that stuff. And here they are. See you next time.